Hi, it's Love with Me by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Today is all about stenciling, how to prevent bleed through, what kind of brushes, how to do two tone, and how to use stencils and actually create really nice pieces of furniture like this. So this is the piece. Um, I at four o'clock this morning I was up looking at Facebook Marketplace and I saw this little jewel. Uh, it was listed in the antique section. However, this is not an antique. It's it's mid-century modern-ish, maybe slightly later, but it's not old, old. Uh, what's happened to it in its life? The previous owner has painted it a really nice shade of burgundy. She hasn't done a bad job. There isn't uh, anything. It's maybe some little parts that could do with a little bit of like, she's been a wee bit kind of messy around some of the areas. The, this needs to go over to Martin's workshop in a minute because the base is broken in half. Martin's going to cut me a new base for this. Uh, the inside's pretty clean, but I'll probably do something with the inside. So a wee maker's mark there. Um, the top has had probably the most wear and tear. And all that is, is she has used a self-sealing, self-leveling paint. I can tell. I can tell. Uh, but she's not sealed it appropriately. So what's happened, it had obviously, it's came away and it's scratching off. Now, how would you tackle something like this? First thing I'm going to do is remove the handles. I'm going to give this a really good scuff sand just to get rid of this. It's, I don't want any loose parts, which there are in any way, but I don't want any of this sort of sheen. Not that Annie Sloan won't stick to that, it will and it's going to be, have a whole load of paint thrown at it because obviously I'm painting it. Um, however, I just want to make sure that up there's sound. Martin's cut me a base and something really interesting. I mean, she's done some kind of interesting things. Uh, I've looked underneath it for somebody that's done it at home. Nice job, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, everybody has to start somewhere. And if you looked back at some of my pieces of furniture, I paint, I'm going to be honest, I painted a piece of furniture that I had painted probably about 15 years ago. It uh, wasn't used for anything, but I wanted to rework it. And uh, I looked at some of my sort of paintwork and I was a little bit kind of, I was there and thereabouts, but there was kind of messy parts that I thought, mm, I would never have thought of doing that then. <laughs> so, you know, everybody has to evolve. So th this is nothing wrong with this. Um, and funnily enough, I'm probably going to keep it in the same, I, I think the reason I was drawn to it was probably the colour. I thought, oh, that's a cute little cabinet, it's a cute little colour and it's a cute little price. I'll be having that. So I'm going to stick within the same sort of colour zones as well for this piece too. Today's video is all about stenciling. I know I do the same things. If you don't know, it kind of revolves. We do some decoupage, we do some transfers, we do some stenciling, we do some stamping and each time I try and show you something different. So this isn't going to be quite a bone inlay piece, but it's going to be lots of borders not a huge amount of work underneath it, not a messy sort of kind of thing, uh, kind of quite one monotone colour, but separated into frames. I think that makes sense. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I bought, if you're ever stuck for stencils now, I know we're bringing our own stencil range. I know it's taken a hot minute, but you have no idea how much lasers are uh, lasers are not <laughs> lasers are not just it's, not, it's complicated it's very complicated <laughs> it's very complex uh it may need building work anyway um until that happens if you're stuck for stencils i just buy the cheap packs and and just supplement what stencils i have but every now and then i go on to etsy and I buy myself um a little pack of them and there's a company in the UK, I don't know about America, that does sort of little kind of packs of them. So I think today we're going to be doing these peacocks, but I'm not going to be doing it in a traditional blue colour. I'm going to be doing it in sort of hot pinks, adding some navies in there. Um, oh, obviously some golds, that kind of thing. But it's just these little packs and they're not very expensive. So you generally kind of get your, your main one, your kind of focus one something for around the edges and some edging strips and these are the kind of good ones that kind of make that sort of bone and lay look hmm? oh well i wasn't wanting to well okay. yeah yeah they, they, martin says show you the inside of the, the packaging so this is the kind of the two sort of main ones the, the reason why i've not really used these that much is i put i've used this one before um 
and it was too small for a big piece whereas this is a small piece so we should be able to make this work I'm not quite sure what the position is but I'm doing an awful lot of talking we haven't even started yet if you're new to my channel don't go oh she's too much talking she's not painting I'm just going to get on with it right now so I'm going to clean it Martin's going to get the new bottom onto it I'm going to scuff sand this get rid of all this sheen make sure the top's good set up with my paints and then I promise after that no more talking oh. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> okay, so it's had a really good scuff sand and I've got rid of most of the sheen. Not that I think it was going to hamper the paint, but anywhere where it was loose over the back there where that it obviously had water damage has all been sanded away. Everywhere else has been sanded. Martin, the lovely Martin has cut me a lovely new base for the bottom of here. I'm not putting this in right now because we'll get to that in a while. I have a plan for that. Um, this I, I always really like it when furniture is like this because this means I basically I've got a carcass because what I've done is I've taken the drawers off, uh, sorry, the fronts off because the fronts will be easier to stamp flat. So uh, what am I doing? These are my colours. Annie Sloan's Burgundy, Capri Pink, Emperor Silk and Oxford Navy. Now, your Oxford Navy and your Capri Pink will make a delicious purple. So let's get on with that first. I want to do the inside Navy. Navy, Navy, Navy. You're not going to see these parts because these are going to have the base on. And the exterior um, carcass is going to be a mix of all of these. But let's get on with doing a really nice purple. Um, what am I starting with this one, I think? So, literally, we're just starting again, but with my own brand. Um, with adding the Oxford Navy um, to your pink, I always think you get a really interest. It's really nice for sort of Indian style finishes, this look. Um, I'm not too worried about this lip because it's going to have a base put over the top of it and nobody's ever going to see it. But just in case, we'll try not to make too much mess of it. Um, the good thing about these colours is you can blend them. Blending. How, let's describe blending. Blending is something that I'm, it's the most asked for thing, blending. There's no rhyme or reason to blending, but blending is much easier if you use colours that are from the same spectrum you'll find that they blend really well together it's only when you start to do things like blending I don't know let me think of two that just it's hard to blend in things like greens and um reds together whereas if you pink pick like you can see all of my colours they all they're all colours that that work this is the one, the blue is making the purple, but these all work together. So there's nothing in here that you know these are going to blend. And I think that's the secret of learning to blend is pretty much sticking with a colour palette. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to put some of um, more hot pink down the bottom here on the toes. Um, I haven't got round to this side here. Maybe a highlight here. But actually, do you know what? I'm going to actually eradicate that because I'm going to put some, um, maybe some reds in there. So get my red out and put my red on. And all you're doing is working from colours that are in your spectrum. So my red's going in there. And I'm blending that together. I'm going to turn it on its side in a minute to get you, give you a much better idea of blending. <laughs> Right, so I've got my two, I've got my blue and my pink on my brush. And when you see me put my paint in my palette, that's how I'm applying them. Both, both paints together like that, so I've got both on my brush. So this way, as long as you keep it and you dip in back in the same way, you are going to get something like that. That's done with one brush. You're not using multiple brushes, that's your brush. Then... I would keep that brush to the side, get a different brush, this one probably, and then you want to go into your reds. Leave a wee gap in between them, something like that. And then you maybe want to have your burgundy. 
you don't need to clean your brush from your red to your burgundy really just do something like this so there you have a hot mess then you get one brush and just start working it in working it in and working it in and you just keep moving your brush keep moving your paint now at this point in time you might need a bit of water but paint always blends better with a little bit of water it's getting a wee bit muddy there so i'm just going to change my brush to this one can you see i'm going every way though and you just keep going and going and going and going and going and going until you get your blend exactly the way you want it there is no mystery it some people do it in a really kind of complicated way but there you have it you've got your dark you've got your pink you've got your reds and you're going into your burgundy now you can do something clever at this point you could get a lighter pink and put it in the middle but i'm not going to because i'm me i'm going to go back with my purple and my pink brush and i'm going to do something like this for the center and i'm going to have an even darker patch in the middle and then i'm just feathery feathery stroking really really light on your brush really really light just tickle it just something like that so then i've got a square within a square just keep blending it you can go down diagonally as well there and lightly 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 let's tidy this up again so there you go that is how that's how you blend you can if you didn't want that in the middle you could do your purple right in with a, just a slight bit you don't have to keep adding all the colors it's just i want the i want the red in this as well but when i know when i go to stencil it i'm going to be wanting something more for the center so that is what i'm doing because when you go to put your stencil think about what's going to happen next so you're going to put a stencil on this part because it's the darker part then you're going to put a stencil on this part and go around in a square and it's a different color then you can put a different stencil again because you've brought the dark color back out think ahead of how it's going to look now i've showed you this side i'm going to do this with the whole of the carcass and paint the inside navy and then we'll get to stencil out i'm going to pretty much do the same blend on the doors and we'll come back to that but i'm just going to be doing the dark purple with the lighter in the middle so what you've seen me do here i'm recreating across the whole piece of furniture and the top painting the inside maybe we'll get to stenciling okay so what's happened i've put my blend all around my piece of furniture and um, around the front here i have done it to the doors yeah exactly how i showed you on the sides i painted the inside navy and with what paint i had left on my paper plate i just roughly painted this because we're going to be putting gold leaf on this top tip if you're going to be doing gold leaf on something it's good to have something underneath it you wouldn't want that raw wood that wouldn't be very nice so i just used up what i had to do that 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 door there now okay so teaching moment coming up stenciling when you put paint out on a palette to stencil even if it's like a chalk based paint and it's thick sometimes what people it happens to me and it, I'll, sh I'll can show you where where um it can run under the stencil so that's one one reason for bleed through that your paint is a little bit too runny second reason for bleed through is that you aren't holding it tight enough or you're moving your stencil and the paint is getting underneath another reason for bleed through is your brush isn't quite right now there are many different types of fancy stencil brushes you can get and i have them but the thing is they're normally for a big stencil that you are doing one color and not for such ornate jobs now let's talk about the paint first let's kind of eradicate all our little problems what i tend to do is just just ordinary baking soda if you just put a little bit of baking soda that's a big bit i don't need that big lumpy part um, on the side of your paper plate when you go to mix your paint so if i wanted to use this green just dip your brush in there and kind of add it to your paint you're not wanting to thicken it up too much but you're wanting to make sure that your paint is thick now when you offload your paint make sure that you offload 
the sides as well of your brush. This is prime for stenciling. So if I was to pick up a piece of stencil right now and I've got a board to show you and I ran this down here. Now I'm not holding it appropriately, but I know that this is the right consistency to stencil with. I'm not stenciling like this. I am going round in a circle like this, holding my stencil really tightly. Now, when I lift this, there should be no bleed through. There's none. Because my paint was thick enough, I was holding my stencil nice and tightly. I wasn't doing all different things with my brush. When you see this kind of a fear, your stencil is bouncing about, it moves, your brush can go underneath it and you end up with something that isn't what you're looking for. So stenciling is something that is can be really, really effective. If you've done one stencil and you've done it in blue, I'm just going to show you how to highlight it. So you would leave that like that and it's just like blending. Let me try and line this up. It's obviously very tricky for me. Aha! So if you've done it like this and you want to put like say you want to change it and put a little bit of green on your brush do the same thing rub it off the side and offload it and then you can just start putting a different color in it if you wanted to add some red just make sure you offload your brush you could go down the inside with red um you wanted to add this part up here yellow but you have to offload my paint's been sitting for a while, so it's getting quite thick. So that is going to work in your favour. Um, that way you can do a two-tone stencil. That there. See, that's your bleed through. Some of it matters, some of it doesn't. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but you don't want a great big piece that isn't stenciled right. And you can see that I've done two tones in there. Yeah? So, brushes. I'm using these for stenciling. This is an old paintbrush that I've cut to get... And this is a really good one. And you can tell I use it a lot. All of these, which are small and tight, small and tight, all work really well for stenciling. That, that one doesn't. But these ones here, small and tight, are all fabulous for stenciling. You would not try and stencil a piece of furniture with this. All that would happen is this: the bristles of this would go under your stencil and give you lots of mess when you lifted it off. These are the kind of things. Thicken up your paint offload your brush on the size of get a paper plate is quite good because it absorbs the paint as well any bit of cardboard anything like that imagine you were dry brushing something like that it, it 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 something dry that will you can offload onto the type of brush the type of way you stencil all plays a part in how you stencil <laughs> i just blew baking soda all over my piece now we know we've done all this part this is what I'm about to do and we'll set up the camera so that you can see me doing this and Matt and I'll just speed it up. But imagine, now let's be critical of my, my work here. This here is good. <sighs> that there is a bit, a bit of bleed through there. You really want it neater and tighter like here. This is where I put the baking soda in the blue. The blue was too runny. I've done two tone. I've done orange and reds here. I've done greens with a different colour green and a blue on the bigger one because you can really blend those out. And I've done two tone. I've done the blue first with the orange in to make my leaves pop. I haven't done this part here yet. There's detail we're going to put down here and we are going to do this piece of furniture um, and probably the sides and the top as well. So I'm going to speed through one door. Well, I'm going to do it slowly. Then Matt's going to speed it up so you can see how I've done this door because once you've seen how I've done one door, it's just about using all little parts of your stencil to make your design work that's all this is about so i'll set up and do this and i'll get stenciling one door and then we'll come back we'll talk about that and then we'll do one side and the rest i'll do probably off camera until it comes to this edge here okay <music>
Okay, so that's the two doors. I'm just cleaning them up with a little bit of sandpaper, just making sure that they're nice. I'm going to set the door the doors to the side. Now, this I'm going to recreate on this, the other side, and on the top, I'm just going to double it. So the same thing, but double. So once you the thing with these, there's a difference between this look and this look. This look is the look that probably I do best. This this is days and days and days and days and hours. This is a clean look, so you're keeping it quite clean. There's no there's no the blend is underneath it. There's no distress or stamping or layering. Clean. So all we're doing is doing one here, there, doubling it on the top. Once I've done that, we'll come back and we'll work out what we're going to do along these details. And then we're going to get to handles and things. I mean, it's it's quick for you, but maybe not so quick for me. But um, that's the thing about stamping, eh, sorry, stenciling. Stenciling can be really rep repetitive, but once you get into it, you know the feel of how it feels with your paintbrush. You know you're not going to get bleed through. You know how to mix your colours. Your brushes are all there. You're in the zone. Put on an audiobook and just stencil your little heart out. And I mean that I just can't say enough about stencils. I absolutely love them. I think they've so moved on from from years and years ago and it just you can do so many different things with them. Like the likes of these flowers that I've put around here where I've put an extra highlight of the sort of orange on top really makes those pop. You can mix stencils. The, the look is clean, so I'm just going to go on because you don't need to see me do the sides and the top and everything. You get what I've done because I've just showed you speeded up my process then we'll turn the furniture around and we'll work out together this band here on the front and everything and how we're going to make that work okay okay so now i'm going to get on with gilding the base if you've never gold leafed before i've got quite a few videos with gold leafing gold leafing is incredibly easy it's very messy but it's very satisfying and to apply a gold leaf you need the gilding adhesive in the UK we call it size, you paint it onto the surface that you want the gold leaf to stick to. You, you can watch all these YouTube videos where people try and tell you you can stick it on with X, Y and Z but it's probably best with the actual gilding adhesive and this is the brand I use. I've already done the backs of the doors, I did those um, yesterday and I'm just going to show you now. This looks a little bit grotty, I put the adhesive on and I dropped it um, and it's been sitting all night so it's got a little bit dusty. This is not the way to do it. You should apply your size and then gold leaf once you've applied your size. But hey oh. Uh, it's always kind of better. It's really good when you're doing a piece like this where you can just pick it up with the paper. Um, it's much easier than doing, you know, all the little fiddly bits. You're just applying it in squares. It's just to give the inside something fancy to look at. We're going to be doing this first. I'm going to be showing you what this looks like and then we are going to be doing the bottom part of the cupboard and I'll get Martin in a minute to give you a look at the sides and the top of the cupboard 
because I, ca I continued the same pattern that we did on the doors on the top and um, the sides. I introduced one of the other stencils into the mix that was from the pack um, yesterday. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute. Oops. The best way, if it comes off the paper, if you've got dry, clean hands, it's always good if you haven't got the adhesive stuck to your hands. Um, with the adhesive, top kind of tips are if you have you applying it with a nice soft brush but make sure that you have a pot of water ready so that you can um, put your brush into the water because the gilding adhesive ruins brushes it's water based so you can just stick it straight into the water and it stops any problems but this is probably the best way of doing such a large surface area like this any of these parts we'll get at the end we'll try and save those because I try and save all my little parts. Some parts cannot be saved. They end up on my carpet and on the floor. And I'm not going to be... Uh, they end up everywhere. <laughs> stuck to your face. And you're washing. And you're washing. <laughs> um, but there's some parts I can't salvage, salvage just because of the stable um, surface, the floor. But if I can, I will. So that's all you do with this. You're just going round. Now, normally what you would do with... Um, if you were applying it onto an edge of a piece of furniture is you would i'm doing this first because i want to try and salvage these pieces before i move on um you would normally get a really soft brush and sort of burnish it in but i'm going to show you what these are all the bits i'm trying to save before they go anywhere else just trying to save these big bits around the edges um maybe you don't feel like saving them but you know they're they're worth saving just move those to the side. Um, now, what we're seeing there is normally um, what you would do is you would get a, um, a brush. But I think when it's a big surface like this to burnish it in, just a nice soft cloth does the job. And you just burnish it all in like you would do if you were doing any other surface. Now, I'm trying to work out what edge. I'm going to come back in with these little parts because I did the edge, the front edge, and these are kind of good, good use of using up your little parts. They just kind of rub in it. It's quite a rough um, front here anyway, so just rub those right along. Try and get all these little parts. I'm making sure that this is all done as well. Get a soft cloth, and that should just get rid of all the parts. And, and all it does is it covers up all your sticky areas. Um, so you shouldn't have any more where you've applied your adhesive you shouldn't have um because i didn't do it on on the edges i've obviously gone over a little bit there just burnish it all in and make sure you get rid of all the loose parts there's a little part here can you see on this edge i'm just going to take a little part of this and just stick it down on there just so that that's covered up this is a little drinks cabinet, so I always think that it always looks quite fancy with your bottles and gold in the inside, but maybe that's just me. I don't quite know what's happened here. I think maybe this is when it got um, dropped. So let's try and fill in these little parts here. You should end up with a surface so that doesn't you can kind of i always think when you when you see people doing this you can kind of see the squares but i think that's i think that's okay so i'm going to clean that off a little bit more off camera in a minute but that's the inside door and these are our doors now we're going to try and avoid all these little parts here what did i do with this door that um what did i do with this door that has hasn't happened here is i got a posca pen Give your Posca pen a shake. And literally, got a little bit goldy stuck in the front here. I did, and it's always good to have the other door to look at. I did the little spot detail around this relief detail here on the edges. So I did that, and I'm not going to make you endure me doing it all the way around. I'll just do it to this bottom. Um, these are, because I know that people will ask, these are Posca. Posca pens. I used to use Artistro and then I found Posca pens and they are fabulous. I did this detail here on these big flowers 
and I did all the way around the edge and in this top here I kind of went and I did little dots down here and I did a tiny little dot down this just I think when it comes to all the finishing touches and making things pop I think these things matter um, I think also as well it can take uh, the look of it being really really stenciled away and make it look a bit more like you've hand painted it um, if you want all these little details now I did this so pretend this door is like that door and I will just quickly um, this is what I did on the side so this one hasn't got its white spots on Flip it in. This side here has its gold, its little white spots on. What did I do on this? Again, I put my white spots up into my green detail along this edge here. This edge here, I'm going to be showing you how to do what I did with this edge on the front in a minute. It's just dry brushed. And when we do the front, I'll, I was going to show you this. I painted this edge here up green, and again, I'm going to show you that on the front. You're not going to miss anything, it's just that these, these parts have already been done. Took my white pen, did the dots in this detail and made this little tiny dot detail to make it kind of move down and move up. That fills it all out really nicely. The stencil that I was telling you about, um, what did I do with it? I went a bit stenciling crazy. I'll find the stencil in a minute because we're going to need it to do this part here was a bigger one and I just took the edge. I quite like the way it just kind of ran off um, and I did the dots. So you haven't missed anything. You showed me, I showed you, and Mark's going to speed it up me doing the main door. This is just a kind of replication of the main door, but because it was a bit bigger, I added this, this piece, this part here. And that's the thing about stenciling. If you've got a few, you can add other parts in, but it's exactly the same. The top was a different kettle of fish because what I did with the top was I just did the same as I said I was going to do tried to replicate it twice but I had these bits on either side and I used again I used this big one to go along here and here and frame it out did my little dots did my detail on the inside put a kind of strip of border and there will be dots going along here but this band here has to be green so I'm just going to set up with my stencil and everything I'm going to need to do this part down here so it works with here and then I'll finish off this door off camera and we'll get these gold leaf doors applied put back onto the furniture and then we'll I think I think I'd prefer to put it all together and then seal it as opposed to seal it separately um, but then it's already hanging there. I'm still deliberating whether I'll seal it with wax or whether I'm going to seal it with lacquer. I'm not going to, I toyed during the night thinking I could put a little bit of dark wax in here. I think if I seal it with lacquer, I could still have that option. Um, so I'm thinking I might do something like that, but I quite like the blend as it is. And from a distance, um, I was looking at it from the stable last night and from a distance, I think it really, it's going to have, a, it's going to have a really nice impact. So let's, let me just set up for this part down here and we'll get everything I need to finish this all off. Okay, so this was the other stencil that I couldn't find. It was very obviously put. Now, it's only this bottom part here I'm going to be using and I'm, not, I'm kind of stopping about here. So here's stuck to it. I'm going to start sort of centrally so that, not that I think it's going to matter, but I think I want to try and get as much of that so this is the sort of where I want to be so I'm using the sort of orangey brown now what I'm having to do here because there's a little bit of a yeah the swirly twirly for down the bottom but these areas here which have got a little bit bent I'm having to do that because I'm also going into a sort of crease in the furniture so I'm going to do this let me just finish this one before we move on. Um, I'm still doing the little bit of baking soda, little bit of um, same sort of good brush, offloading, all the things that I've been telling you. Um, and I'm making a bit of a mess of this actually, I think. 
uh, yeah, it's tricky on these edges, but I think it'll give it a nice sort of finish. Just going with it there, just making sure that I'm happy with that. So I'm going to do this along this edge here. And then what I did was I got the sort of, um, now you really could do with a really, you really, really, really need, you can see how much I'm offloading this. You really, really, really need a dry brush for this because this is dry brushing, obviously. So what I did with this edge here is I just went, along this edge, just take your time, go slow. I did that along this edge here, of my furniture. Let's get the one through there, Let's go grab that on the nail. So I've got this detail here, this detail here, and then what I did with this detail here, and I shouldn't really probably be showing you this when it's wet, is this bottom rung, I went like this. And this will be a continuation um of the front so that it matches the sides i also did this with the stencil just so it all matches up so i've got this to do along here this to do here with the spots i have my other spotty door that i'm going to finish off off camera the last thing i need to do is I've mixed up a green here. This is just the same palette as yesterday. I mean, I put a little bit more out just in case, but kicking my door. All I'm going to be doing is this lip here. And for this, you need a kind of, uh, what will we say? A little artist brush that can get into both and is smooth enough that you can bring it up under the lip. So mine is a kind of angled one. Can you see it goes at that angle? is because I can place it at this angle and it's getting into this little top groove perfectly without making a mess of it. And it's also wide enough and good enough to do this edge. Now, I remember during the night that I hadn't told you something quite important when I started this piece. When you, when you blend furniture, you can blend furniture in two different ways. You can start with a mid-tone as your base coat. So say it was you were using three shades of green, your dark green, your light green and your mid green. You do your base, one good solid coat as your mid, with your mid colour if you were going to do a blend. Or you could do a blend with, the first blend is the blend if you know what I mean. Like Brandy does, you know, you could blend it once and then blend it again twice. I didn't need to put a base coat on this because there was that red underneath it to begin with. That was what I used. I do either or, sometimes I do the mid coat, but quite often I find, it's a personal thing, that sometimes I really like my blend the first time I do it, and I'm always slightly reticent to go back and blend over the top of it again with my second coat in case I, I don't get my blend the way I quite wanted it the first time round. Some people use the first blend as kind of setting the scene where their colours are going to go and really touch up on the second blend. But I'm a wee bit kind of like, oh, I really like that and I don't want to do it again. So it depends. If you feel like you you think, mm, that might happen to me, then just put a, put your base coat on as a mid-tone of what colours you're going to blend with. I think I'm making sense here. Um, if not, and you think, oh, no, I'd like to just be able to set the scene where my blend's going to go, then blend it first and then blend it again as your second coat. What I'm trying to say is you need two coats of paint. So it depends which one you use, but I had the red on, so that's why I did that. And I'd forgotten to tell you that, but that's quite important. You do need to have a base coat on. You can't just do a blend, one coat on a piece of furniture. There'll be too much showing through. Um, it will look messy. You need two coats of something, either a base coat or a blend. Right, okay. Now we know I'm putting the green on here and all these other details. I'm going to go and do that. And then the next thing, uh, I'll just kind of roughly talk you through this. Uh, I have these, um, I got them in the charity shop the other day and I thought when I saw them, I thought, oh, these will look really nice handles and um, they're cut and tie backs. What I'm actually going to do is I'm probably going to cut them about this length here, put this here, thread the two ends back through so that this bobbly part is on here. And then I'm going to ask the lovely Martin to drill me a wider hole that these two ends will fit through 
and find some way of attaching this neatly at the back so that I have tassel handles. <laughs> Just, just I've just, I've just, I'm off. You could, could you see that there as I was showing you? But I've looked, at, I looked at Matt, and he just looked a little bit perplexed, <laughs> a, a slightly perplexed at my choices. Uh, but yes. yeah, <laughs> but that's what my intention is. I don't want to cut them on camera yet until I kind of have a rough idea. But I think the tassel going through alone might look a little bit dull. But I think with this end here, it could make it look even more bougie. This is what I plan to do because obviously the inside's gold. And I thought the gold, the gold, a little bit of, oof. So, and also the next time you see it as well, we'll have the base in before we get to sealing. Okay, so, so, so like I haven't spent enough time on this little cabinet. I've decided that when, when the doors go back on it, it's going to look very bland and doesn't really say whoop-de-doo. I don't think it's enough. So I've decided... I'm going to put this half mandala stencil in the centre. Now it's one that you match up with two halves, so I'm trying not to make it squint, but there is a high chance that it probably could be at the end of the day. All I'm going to do, and I'm going to gold leaf it after Martin's just swept my floor, tidied up all my gold, and I just said to him, what will I do? And he said, use gold, and I said, oh, on my brush, I said, gold leaf, and he went, no, gold paint, and then we looked at each other and went, gold leaf, so here we are again. Now, when you're doing something like this, it's kind of offloading a little bit this size. You just, you don't want too much of it. So I'm just kind of holding it. I think this is about right. And it's the same process, exactly the same process as stenciling. You're just putting it in and making sure you don't overload your brush too much. And just going round and round and round. Now I've seen people do it with like tacky spray. But tacky spray shouldn't really be holding on gold leaf. So I'm a bit reticent to do that kind of thing. I think maybe there's a reason why gold leaf is applied by this. It's for reasons. So I'm 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 just sticking with what I know. Um if you've tried it with tacky spray, can you let me know and tell me whether you thought it was was a good option or not? Uh right, so I think. What? Where am where, I, where, where are your brushes now? Here? I haven't gone around that side yet, Matt, and I was just kind of recapping where I'd been. Don't worry. I will make sure I've got it all covered. No, 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 not yet. It's okay. Don't panic, Matt. Don't panic, Martin. Don't panic, <laughs> don't panic, Martin. It's all okay. Now, I think I've got it everywhere on there, but before I because um, I'm going to have to take it over to the house to wash it because I can't put the sticky side down. I'm going to move it up slightly and I'm just going to do this little corner one as well. Oops, I just put right under my stencil there so that's going to be a little bit smeary, this one. I mean, you're not required to do any of these things. But whoever buys it, and when I take photos of the inside, it could be just enough to tip them over the edge. <laughs> Certainly tipping me over the edge. Right, so, this side up here is done as well. I think I'll make sure I've got it all in here. Let me lift it off. Can you see on camera, Martin? Can you see the, there's a bit of gold leaf as it is. Um, there's the design. And um, I'll come back in a minute once I've washed my stencil, done my other half of this, and we'll do the gold leaf and we'll do the reveal of that because... I think I want, I've now decided that I'd quite enjoy one on, on, the, side on the side as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's how I roll. Oh, actually, am I being, am I being really silly? I don't, I don't need to wash it. Look, I just need to turn it like this. Man, and why did you not pick up on my stupidity? Uh, I think I'm seeing. I think I'm seeing there. You wait and see. Oh, it'll not match up. I'll just come up with a smart answer. Well, see, I didn't want it to match. <laughs> now, why did I think I had to turn it round? Oh, I don't know. So, so far today, when it comes to stenciling, I've showed you how to kind of problem solve if you're getting bleed through. 
I've showed you the kind of brushes that I use. I obviously, I'll show you at the end, stencil brushes as well, um, because I just tend to use artist brushes because I'm, I'm generally doing spot. I could have went over to the house actually and got stencil brushes, proper stencil brushes for this, but no, no, you know, I'm doing it this way. So we've done also, we're doing gold leaf stenciling. We've shown you how to um, do stencil, how to make your stencils pop a little bit more by highlighting them. We've done how to zhuzh up your stenciling with Posca pens. All the stenciling. So today, really, I think, uh, I don't want to call this one stenciling like a boss because I did stamp them like a boss last week. But I do kind of think this is one of those ones that if you're wanting to stencil things, everything I'm saying is, it's all the things I've learned. Right, there we go. And I'm just going to slide this up here to my, I think it's actually going to be okay, Martin, look. I think you're not going to have an eye twitch and it's all going to be good. Now, I'm going to stop the camera now because you don't need to keep me seeing doing this until I can set up the gold leaf, okay? Sorry, it's upside down. It's just it's the easiest way to film it. You'll know when your gold leaf size is ready to use because it'll no longer be white. If you can see, see up in these areas here where there's still white sections, the glue is not ready. So, same sort of process as before with this one. We're just kind of laying it down giving it a wee pat and you just apply like you were doing your doors earlier really it's not like a border or a trim we're doing it's big sheets um and hopefully when the cupboard opens up this will make it look quite quite well finished and nice um I'll come back in a minute when I'm ready to wipe this away because I'm scared that this is this tiny cupboard is probably going on for forever in a day now. We're good, are we, Matty? Oh, we're good. Okay, we'll just stick with this process then, guys. I come double, moving double quick now. Um, one more for here. And whoops, it helps if I don't lean on it. Now, there's a wee section there. I'm going to have to get a brush. Martin, talk to them. <laughs> so, what I kind of tend to do is pat first, because that kind of sticks it down. So go over it, patting it. That's kind of sticking it down. And then, once you've got this far, start. Now, I kind of use my brush this way. This way, it kind of reveals, kind of gets in all the little parts that you've done. So you have to kind of keep turning your brush around as a kind of, like a kind of shovel. And I'm sure some people would describe it slightly more delicately like <laughs> using a shovel but you know what I mean and you're just kind of using your brush this way this way every way to kind of dig in where the, there was no glue applied <laughs> no it's okay Martin's making buttons bleep I always think a bit of gold re leaf reveal is always quite um quite giddy. It makes me giddy. So you really have to kind of work. I'm going to have to kind of go around it a couple of times, but you get you get that, and that is just going to make the inside just that little bit more fancy. Give it a good rub in those details there. And there you go. So I did a half one here, a half one there, and those two little, two little ones up at the cor at the corners. I'm going to get on. There's a little bit of bleed through up in this top corner, but there's really not much you can do with that. I mean, I just run with it. Um, it's not always an easy process with this. 
because it's not like you can keep off loading your adhesive. So I'll get on and do this, and then I'll get the lovely Martin. <laughs> <laughs> the lovely Martin to sweep it all up again. Oh, but Martin, you're so much more patient and better at doing this than me. Yeah, I've got the patience. Uh, there we go. So I'll get Martin to tidy up and then we will um, put the bottom in. Uh, put the bottom in. You know, put you don't. Put the doors back on and the then on. <laughs> I've sealed the doors so I'll seal it um, and then we can. Um, get to the kind of final hurdle i don't know when i'll be back I might just be back at staging time now i think probably it will be won't I? can you think of anything if i'd feel the need a burning desire to tell you anything between now and staging i'll come back how does that grab you <laughs> before martin can put the handles on these doors need to be sealed so i'm just sealing these with my usual tough i can never say it tough top coat and it's by French Chic um, and that's what I use. It's a really sturdy, really trustworthy top coat as far as I'm concerned and I've tried an awful lot of top coats. I'm just applying it with a brush, sometimes I apply it with a kitchen sponge but today I'm using a brush because I want to get in all of these details and I don't want it all settling in there. Once I've put it on I normally do one more kind of tidy up sort of lot of strokes and we will call that good on that one i'm going to let that dry do the other one and by then the glue on the gold leaf size will be will be dry and we can um get on with gold leaf and that then martin can put the bits and the, the tassels in these doors and i can seal the main piece and then we'll be running all the way to staging really so we're finished for being a very small cupboard, it did seem to take quite a time. Uh, I've really ran through what we did today, so you know everything we did. Today was really about stenciling. It was about preventing bleed through. It was about using brushes. It was how to do two-tone. All the little things that can go wrong. Uh, it was about enhancing stencils to make your work unique in your own uh, by using Posca pens and things like that. And there was also a whole load of gold leafing. And look at these, like, look at my tassels. <laughs> <laughs> these are, aren't these the most bougiest, bougiest handles ever? How did Martin do it? I cut the tie backs, I threaded this part back on. And what he did was he got a piece of an old, off an old piece of furniture and he made me a kind of bracket to hold it on. These are on solid now. Inside has been gold leafed and um, it's got its pattern. It's a little bit gold leaf there. We, you, 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 find, the you, find, you find gold leaf everywhere after you've done it. You have to give it a good, it's been hoovered, you name it, but it's still little bits that hang about. So that's really it for today. That's all about stenciling. Um, it This kind of thing is a good thing size to practice on when you want to begin stenciling something small don't start off with a dresser you'll be you'll have lost your mind by the first panel because it's so repetitive but as i said the best way to combat and get good looks about stencils take your time put an audio book on just get into your zone just take your time and it works well whether you are putting a blend under it or whether you're putting distress under it it doesn't matter how you do it there you go stenciling uh, I've been Leo from Made by Marley. Thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate it. And we got to 5K okay, yeah. um, this week, which was, I mean, it's hard to imagine. I remember thinking with YouTube, if I got to 5K, I'd have made it. That's it. I've arrived. 5K. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, it's just, it's crazy. It's really crazy. And thank you for all the lovely comments. And I really do. I mean, I understand that a lot of furniture it, artists get quite a lot of kind of haters or negative comments i occasionally but very yeah, rarely <laughs> no i get i get i know don't be coming on here and tell me you don't like my furniture now but but no i get lots of really nice comments thank you so much for them so if you like this video today give us the thumbs up share it uh leave me a lovely comment and i answer all of the comments myself nobody else just me so when you get answered it is actually me that's doing it and don't forget to subscribe 
and myself and the lovely Martin. Say hello, lovely Martin. Hello, lovely Martin. Uh, who's behind the camera. We'll see you again next Sunday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.